So Android has given the iPhone an unprecedented level of competition from HTC's One X and Samsung's Galaxy S3. And Apple's retaliated with the iPhone 5. It's longer, leaner, faster, it packs 4G and the brand new iOS 6 operating system. But has it done enough to put it back on top? So this is the first iPhone with a four inch screen and the first to adopt the 16 by nine widescreen format. So it's just about big enough for movies on the move and extra screen space means an extra line of apps as well as more entries in lists and calendar views while remaining comfortable for one handed use. The width of the screen and 640 pixel resolution matches the 4S, but the height has been increased from 960 to 1136 pixels. So not quite 720 PhD, but it's not far off but it is still incredibly crisp and it's more colourful. Blues and purples particularly stand out compared to the 4S and photos look shinier. And compared to the yellowish Samsung Galaxy S3, whites are whiter and colours generally more natural. Oddly, the extra space isn't utilised by the landscape keyboard and only Apple's own apps take advantage of the extra screen space right now, meaning existing apps are surrounded with black untouchable strips at either end. But iOS still dominates app territory and we can imagine essential apps will be updated very soon. Now at a quick glance, the iPhone 5 could very easily be mistaken for a 4S, but the back is where it's at as the glass has been mostly replaced by a panel of wraparound aluminium and the quality of finish is fantastic. And at 112 grams and 7.6 millimeters thin, the reduced weight and thickness is rather striking when you pick it up for the very first time. And while it's a fresh look, the 4S's extra weight lends it a more substantial feel. And we've got to say we're a bit concerned as to how long the 5's anodized finish will stay pristine. Apple's also ditched the 30 pin connector for the tiny all digital reversible and robust lightning connector, but you'll need one of its two DAC flavored adapters if you want it to play nice with your old kit. A couple of machined grills sit at the bottom covering a mic and a loud and clear speaker and for the first time the 3.5mm headphone jack. And talking of headphones, there's the all new and hugely improved earpods, but their one size fits all nature means they sit outside the ear canal leaving little room for noise isolation. The new A6 processor makes a palpable difference to the overall speed of the iPhone 5. There are shorter in-app loading times compared to the 4S, smoother 2D and 3D graphics, and a general reduction in waiting when zipping around from app to app. Siri opens immediately, adding attachments to email is completely lag-free, the camera is up and running almost instantly, and it's now capable of snapping a full-res shot when filming 1080p video. To put it bluntly, this is the fastest, smoothest, most seamless smartphone experience money can buy. And there's no noticeable death grip. Moving on to the camera and the iPhone 5 snapper rocks the same 8 megapixel resolution and f2.4 lens as the 4S. But it's been upgraded. 1080p video is excellent for a phone, matching the S3's footage in good conditions and beating it in high contrast or gloomy conditions. Stills are equally impressive with a cool new panorama feature and the remarkable ability to dig up detail in dim and indoor environments. But that position of the lens still makes it hard to handle in landscape mode and all too easy to blot out vital footage. Now Apple hasn't really changed that home screen grid layout since 2007, but there are some obvious touches, such as the new banner that appears across newly downloaded apps and the sticky gum visual that stretches from the top of the email app as you drag down to refresh your inbox. Then there's the new Do Not Disturb feature, which allows you to specify how contactable you are to different callers. Facebook is now just as integrated as Twitter, so you can post photos directly from the also subtly upgraded Photos app, as well as use Siri. Friends' birthdays also appear in calendar and phone numbers in contacts. The shared photo stream can send notifications to your friends whenever you add a new photo. FaceTime now works over 3G as well as Wi-Fi. And there's a VIP inbox, which automatically filters messages from your chosen contacts. Just as usefully, you can now assign different email signatures to different accounts as well. It's not exactly revolutionary, but it is a brilliantly intuitive operating system. But we've got to say Android's home screens are more exciting, more instantly informative and fresh. Now, both iTunes and the App Store have been given a slick refresh, pulling in more information on each page and reading less like a list, with numerous flickable carousels to browse through and tabs to click on for more comprehensive user reviews and ratings. 
Then there's Apple's Maps, but the switch from Google Maps is something of a mixed blessing. The headline feature has got to be Flyover, which introduces interactive 3D models which are limited to selected cities worldwide. The practical applications of the tech are limited, but there's no denying zooming in and spinning your map around the circumference of buildings is impressive. It may be a gimmick, but it is brilliant. Maps can also be used as a full-on sat-nav with voice augmented turn-by-turn navigation, estimated time arrivals, live traffic updates and more. It's decent but a distance behind Android's Google Maps in terms of its search skills and knowledge of dead ends and one-way systems iOS 6 has also made Siri far more useful and the whole experience more natural and conversational. For example, it can now answer movie-related questions associated with Rotten Tomatoes, even poorly constructed ones. And Siri will answer your sports-related questions. Now, services are limited, so the football results are Premier League only, for example, but we do finally get the local businesses functionality. Now, possibly the iPhone 5's most trumpeted feature is 4G LTE. Everything Everywhere's 4G nano sims aren't available just yet, but the 5 was noticeably faster loading pages on the go than the 4S was. Dual-band wireless N Wi-Fi is also a bonus and makes for extremely nippy downloading. We found the iPhone 5 installed new apps in about half the time that the 4S took. And disappointingly, there's no NFC, but there is Passbook, which allows you to keep all of your loyalty cards, gig tickets and boarding passes in a single digital wallet for simple paper-free exchanges. But sadly, this feature wasn't live at the time of testing. And finally, you can expect 8 to 10 hours of normal use and up to 5 hours of heavy use watching YouTube over Wi-Fi, for instance. So we guess the question you all want answered, is the iPhone 5 worth the money? Absolutely, it's certainly done enough to reclaim that number one smartphone spot, just not as extravagantly as it's done in the past. It performs with flawless operation on a screen that's absolutely stunning. It's not flashy or radical, but it is a significant improvement over what was an already excellent device. So what you're looking at is the best smartphone on the market. Well, at least for now.